we're going to use this little starfish toy to talk about something really important in mold making, and that is position in space. How do you orient the piece in space to cast it properly? This video is sponsored by my Patreon. Huge thanks to everyone who has already signed up. Whatever the shape of the object is you're making, you have to be able to visualize it as a whole in space. Now, later in the video, you're going to see me make this mold. When you're seeing this, you're thinking this, and you're thinking, how am I going to hold it in space? What position is it going to take in space to make the fewest possible number of sprues and vents? I decided to hold it like this in space. That means that I'm going to have a sprue here, a vent here, and a vent over here. That's not quite the most efficient layout. I could have done it in such a way that it would have a funnel and a sprue here, an event coming off of here, just two connections. And that would have been the most efficient way. The reason that I laid it out the way I did, requiring the funnel and the sprue here and two vents, is I'm gonna do something I've never done on the channel before, and that is I'm gonna cut them in, just to show you that that's an option. It's not my favorite way to work, but once in a while you make a mistake and you have to cut the mold to put in a vent or a sprue. So we're gonna cut this mold, we're gonna pour it, and we're gonna see how the whole thing works. Because I use scrap wood, you can see here that I didn't have quite enough wood to make this box. And that is a consequence of me building everything out of scrap wood. Sometimes you just got to work with whatever you have. This plastic toy is not laying flat on the surface. So that means I'm going to have to weight it down some way. Okay, I've set up my holdout rig here. You can see what a simple rig it is. Just three clamps and some scraps of wood. Let's see if this thing is going to work. I mixed up a seven gram batch of rubber and I put the teeniest drop of Rapid Set Accelerator in it, and man, it sets up fast, especially since the shop is warm. I barely had time to get this thing brushed on. You can see how blobby and goopy the rubber is. It's setting up super fast. Well, we'll have to see how good an edge that's gonna give us around the toy. It may leak, it may not be quite filled, it may have bubbles, we'll just have to wait and see. I mixed up a 330 gram batch of rubber. Always put the hardener in the container first, then add the rubber. The advantage to this is twofold. First, it makes it much easier to mix the hardener with the rubber. And second, if you add the rubber in first, it sticks to the sides of the containers. And I don't care, you can scrape and scrape and scrape and you're never gonna get all the rubber off the sides of the container and off the bottom of the container. You just won't. If you put the hardener in first, it coats the sides, the rubber slips around in there, and everything mixes up evenly, and it makes it so much easier. Tip of the day, put the hardener in the container, and then add the rubber. Makes your life so much easier. This is just a perfect part to demonstrate the fact that you never drape the part by pouring rubber over it. You always pour around it, let the rubber rise up, pushing out the air against the part. That's how you get bubble-free castings. See, people do this all the time on YouTube, makes me mental. They just bleh, pour a big blanket of rubber on top of their part and they just trap all kinds of air underneath that blanket. It's just inevitable. Okay, all that happened yesterday. Let's take this thing apart and see what we got. There are a couple of places where there's a little bit of leakage, and I always like to use a brand new X-Acto blade when I cut the rubber. It just makes it easier. And always stretch the rubber while you cut it. Rubber is hard to cut unless you stretch it. Nice, it came out pretty clean. You might have noticed that when I set up this mold, I didn't put in the sprue or the vents. And that's because for this mold, I'm gonna cut them into the rubber. This is not my favorite method of work, and I only use it in emergencies. But a lot of people swear by it, and it's a good technique to know about. Use a very sharp razor blade and simply cut grooves into the rubber. And my contention is, you're never going to get as neat a connection with a cut as you will with wax and carefully making your sprues and vents. But as you will see, this does work. 
I have no idea how much resin I'm going to need, but I'm pretty confident that I mixed too much. <laughs> Mixed up a nice 80 gram batch. I'm going to start to pour it, and if it leaks like a sieve, like crazy, I may stop. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, that is well mixed. Starting to get warm. Plenty of mixing time. Uh oh, Houston, we've got a problem. Doesn't look like this boy's going to fill. This is a good lesson, take-home lesson. This fout is too small for the size of this mold. This resin is already setting up. Yeah, we're going to have to make this spout considerably bigger. It was an obvious mistake to not make the sprue big enough. So it's really important to match the size of the sprue and the vents to the size of the part. This was a perfect example of what happens when you use too small a sprue for too big a part. The resin's just going to cure up, and the part's never going to fill properly. Now I've probably cut it bigger than I need, and I've got quite a cleanup here to do on the castings, but that's okay. We'll take it. Okay, take two. Let's see if we have enough this time in the cup. Mix, mix, mix. Quick, quick, quick. Let's go. I'm not going to let it get warm this time. I'm just going to pour it. Here we go. Let's see how it does. I'm going to come around so I can see. I really wanted you to see how a mold fills. The resin runs down the sprue to the very bottom of the cavity, then rises evenly, pushing the air out above it. Now you see the importance of the vents. They're like little chimneys that let the air out. That's why you always position the vents at the very top points of the cavity. For fun, let's just watch a time lapse of the resin cure. Watch how it cures quickly in the middle and then slowly cures out to the edges. Notice how the vents are the last things to cure. Little parts, tiny parts, cure a lot slower than big bulky parts. The areas that touch the mold are the last to cure. It's one of the reasons why the resin eats the mold because it stays liquid much longer right at the edge and gives it time for the resin to attack the rubber and eventually break it down. Okay, let's pry this thing open. We know we've got a casting because <laughs> we can see it. Very unusual. We usually don't know. Usually we're working blind here. We're pretty clear as to what's going on. The resin does stick harder to the acrylic than it does to the urethane, but I think if I flex it, it might pop off. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to call that a pretty successful casting. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. If you got some value out of this video, uh, my channel is supported by my Patreon. The link is down below, and I appreciate everybody that has already signed up. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Or I won't, and you'll be somewhere else.